I believe I have discovered how and why gravity works and how to make an anti-gravity drive, how UFO technology works. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on this with you today. I came up with this concept a long time ago when I was about 15 years old with my brother, uh, my brother Vincent. We we're having a debate, we we're just talking about science and uh, we used to study gravity a lot. So I liked that it was a mystery that nobody really understood. So I was always trying to figure it out. And this is what I came up with. Look at matter at a smallest degree. I'm not talking quartz. I'm just talking the atomic scale to be simple. Now imagine that atom had an energy pattern to it. Let's say the atomic flow. Let's call it the atomic flow. There's no words for it. Now let's look at this atom and let's just imagine the pattern is a figure eight just for the sake of explaining it. it I don't know what the actual pattern looks like, but just for the sake of this argument, just bear with me. So let's say the energy pattern is in a figure eight design. Now you have this one atom floating alone in space and then you have another atom and they come together and then both atoms start sharing the same pattern of energy okay so they want to act like the smallest version of themselves so the smallest version of matter is the atomic or the quartz whatever and when they get together they want to share the same energy to act like a bigger version of its smallest self so now you have two atoms and they're sharing their energy now let's jump far ahead and continue this process till you have a planet, like the planet Earth. Now let's imagine every single atom on this planet is flowing with each other in that same cohesion of energy pattern. So every single atom within the sphere of this, the gravitational sphere of this Earth has this energy flow. So this is the basic principle to what gravity really is. It's a pattern. It's a it's, it's energy congruence where things flow together. They, they're, they're in sync with each other. They're, they're matching each other. So you look at the atoms in your body in relation to the atoms of the earth. Since all atoms are flowing with each other, your atoms are in sync in that flow with the atoms of the earth. So you're literally one with the earth. You're part of it because you're part of the energy. And when you jump up, you come back down because you're one with the energy of the earth. You're part of the flow. You're part of the atomic flow. Let's call this pattern the atomic flow, like the atomic energy flow of each atom. So now we get to a higher degree. Now let's act like this earth is the same as this one single atom in terms of the energy pattern. So it has this figure eight pattern. And now you have the entire planet earth acting as a single atom, okay? Now let's zoom out to a solar system scale. And the solar system, each planet is acting like a solitary atom, has its own atomic flow, is mimicking the, the smallest version of itself, which is the atom. And all these atoms, they're planets, but they're acting like atoms in terms of their energy flow or atomic flow, are in a bubble, the solar system. So there's a ring, all these planets together. And now this acts like a ball the solar system acts like a bigger ball. So you know how the Earth acts like um, one atom because all the atoms together flow with each other? Now the solar system acts like an even bigger single atom, okay? So all the planets within the solar system are in sync with each other. Their, their uh, flow is similar. It's a similar pattern. And then it creates a bigger, a bigger sphere of energy. So this is now the atomic energy of the solar system as one big ball flowing in sync with each other in synchronicity. And you can do the same thing again, zoom out again to the galaxy scale where every single solar system and star system acts like an atom. They're all cohesive with one another and they all want to sync together to flow within the same pattern. Okay. So now you have a galaxy, a galactic, um, atomic flow galactic atomic flow so you have this this galactic atomic flow and it acts like a single atom 
in terms of energy. So it's flowing in sync with each other, and they're all in, they're all to their this rhythm, like a dance almost. Like all their energy is just linking up, and that's what's holding it together. That's what gravity is. So now we get to inertia. Okay. Now inertia is your body is within the atomic flow of the planet or the solar system or the galaxy. It doesn't really matter. And you're in sync. You're flowing in sync. And then all of a sudden you physically move. You physically move in that and during that movement period where you're accelerating or decelerating until you maintain a constant speed. You're making the atomic flow of the atoms in your body fall outside of sync. So it doesn't want to fall outside of sync. It wants to stay in sync. So that's what inertia is. You feel that force of fighting to stay within. An object in motion wants to stay in motion. An object at rest wants to stay at rest. Uh, inertia. It's because if in relation to this, like even if you're moving fast, like let's say I'm going 100 miles an hour, if you're at a constant speed, your atoms fall back in sync with the rest of the planet. And uh, as long as you're accelerating or decelerating, you're messing with the synchronicity. And that fight is the fight of your body's atoms, all the atomic flow, the atomic flow of your body, bodies, all the atoms in your body becoming out of sync and wanting to stay in sync. So they're like being pushed or pulled in the wrong pattern. And, it, and it's a fight. It's resistance. It doesn't want to change. So now we get to anti-gravity. So now you know that everything in the universe or everything in the galaxy and the solar system and each planet acts like an atom. Like the planet acts like a single atom. The solar system acts like a larger single atom in terms of energy flow. And each planet acts like a an atom just like each atom in this planet acts in sync with one another and then you go into the galaxy okay and it's all similar it's all mimicking the smallest it's all mimicking the smallest uh, version of reality which is the atomic scale everything wants to be like the everything is acting like the atom in terms of energy they're all joining together flowing together okay so now we get to anti-gravity in order to make an anti-gravity drive or something that you'd need to figure out what the atomic flow is and then counteract it. So let's imagine we made an artificial atomic flow. Okay. Let's imagine we had a bubble, a sphere, and we spun a dense liquid with high atomic mass in the most resistant way against the, against where it wants to go. Okay, so it wants to stay in sync with gravity. It wants to stay in sync with the atomic flow of all mass around it. It's powerful. It wants to stay in sync. So you're going to artificially make a new atomic flow for the atoms in this sphere. And you're going to do that by making its own pattern. Okay? So let's say you have your own pattern now, your own atomic flow for this bubble. And it falls outside of the atomic flow of the rest of the world. Instead of your atoms being in sync with the world, when you jump up, you come back down. Now, when you jump up, you stay up because you fall outside of gravity. Gravity no longer affects you. The atomic flow of the universe, of the galaxy, of the solar system, no longer affects you. You fall outside of it. So you're not in sync anymore. You're in your own in sync. So when you make this new bubble of uh, atomic flow or anti-gravity, whatever you want to call it, you're making your anything within this sphere and everything anything within this bubble is gonna fall into sync with that new flow because that's the nature of atoms they want to be in sync with the atomic flow that they're in or that they're around so in, in terms of us being born on earth we're in the atomic flow of this galaxy but if you make an artificial atomic flow and your atoms get pulled in sync with that then you're going to be outside of the flow of gravity for this universe or this galaxy and you're going to be in a new one. And if you make your own artificial gravity like that, your own bubble, where your atoms are in sync with the bubble and not with everything outside of it, then you can start and stop. You can go a thousand miles an hour and then stop on a dime 
or even a trillion miles an hour and stop at a dime. And there would be zero inertia. Because inertia only exists when you are in the atomic flow and you suddenly jerk out of it and it wants to stay in. But because you're in your own atomic flow, you're on your own bubble, inertia no longer affects you. You effectively have an inertialess anti-gravity drive. And when you make your own bubble of atomic flow, gravity, and it's different than the gravity outside or the atomic flow outside of this bubble, then the outside atomic flow no longer influences you. You fall outside of gravity. You are no longer influenced by gravity. The reason why you, when you jump up, you come down is because you're in sync with the energy of the earth and the universe. And the reason why a UFO technology or anti-gravity technology would work is because you create your own bubble, your own atomic flow, understanding the nature of gravity and how it actually works. And you create a counter flow or anti flow and you have your own outside of the atomic flow bubble and you're no longer affected by inertia, weight or pressure. So you could be in the bottom of the sea with a tin foil or water balloon strength air bubble. And because you have your own atomic flow bubble around you, you have your own bubble, all the weight from the ocean wouldn't affect you because all the atoms from the ocean water that touch this energy field will then become part of the new rotation, the new flow of the field that you make. So you have a bubble of anti-gravity and everything in that flow would no longer be affected by the weight of the atomic flow of the world and it would fall outside of it. All right, so how do you create an anti-gravity drive? Well, according to my hypothesis or conjecture, whatever you want to call it, because I don't have the money to prove this, uh, the best way to counteract the atomic flow would be to get a uh, liquid with a high atomic mass and rotate it in a direction that opposes the atomic flow of the rest of the world. So a liquid metal would be ideal. Water might work, but the more atomic mass it has would probably make more difference. Because if you think about it, inertia, ha there's more inertia the more dense an object is. Like, it has more atomic flow, in other words, the more density an object has. So if you can find the right way to spin something that fights perfectly against the atomic flow because and the reason why this would work is because inertia exists you see so when i move fast i feel that resistance is because my atoms are falling outside the atomic flow of the world slightly that means movement can make you fall outside of the flow slightly so if you move it in a specific pattern that's exactly opposing to the atomic flow of the world or the galaxy uh, perhaps that would work or you may need an electromagnetic field of some sort that counteracts the energy in a perfect pattern. So now let's get into how this uh, affects time. When people go into space, the time flow is a little different than the time flow on Earth because they're not part, they fall outside of the Earth's flow and go into the solar system's flow. But when they're outside of the Earth's bubble, they fall outside of the gravity slightly, and then they become part of the shell of the, of the solar system. So the slight change in atomic flow from being in a weightless atmosphere in between atoms, in between the atoms of the planets, like each, each planet acts like a big atom in terms of energy. So you're in between them, you're in space, you're weightless. So time changes. So what is time? Time is the... Time is when everything within an atomic flow flows together. How do I explain this? Everything is flowing together in reality. Everything in this reality flows together that has the atomic flow. That's what gravity is. It's a glue that holds the universe together. Everything's flowing together and within this range of energy, right? So when you fall outside of it, because you're not in agreement with the, the drumbeat of the universe or the drumbeat, this pattern, this dance of the atomic flow, 
Because the atomic flow is what gravity is and what time is, if you fall outside of it, you also fall outside of time. And this would explain why UFOs and time distortions are often correlated together. It would also explain why if you meet a creature who's interdimensional and learns how to open an energy field that makes them fall outside of this reality into another one, falling outside of this reality and getting into another reality, the other reality might have a completely different atomic flow or gravitational flow, whatever the hell you want to call it, graviolis, like a Futurama. The other reality might have a different beat, a different pattern slightly. So let's say if you go to the world of the little people, um, the reason why the time distortion might happen is because their flow is different. Now, how uh, atomic flow would influence time in relation to the people outside of that bubble, I don't know. You'd have to experiment. But I believe this is why UFOs have frozen time with a lot of cases. Like, for example, my friend was at a fair and she saw a UFO. And when she was within the middle of the UFO, okay, so the UFO was flying over, all of a sudden she was in the middle of it. And everyone around here was completely frozen except for her. She was looking around like, what the hell? Right? Right? And then the UFO is just slowly moving, and then all of a sudden, boom, it was gone, vanished out of existence, and she was moving again, everyone else was moving, right? So if the UFO technology is using atomic flow or gravitational flow, and they're manipulating it to make their own bubble, if time is dependent upon atomic flow agreement, like we're all in agreement with the same pattern, so we're all flowing through time together, and they fall outside of that, then it could be a outside of time flying outside of gravity flying what if she fell within the field and it had to do with the north and south pole of the ship's energy okay and she was briefly within the time dilation or gravitational dilation field and she fell outside of time and gravity for a second possible but I think uh, this isn't a complete theory I think I don't understand it fully because I'd need to experiment and see what happens when you make something flow off scale with the universe's atomic flow or whatever. So um, I really don't know what it would take to manipulate time or if it would manipulate time, but it just makes sense that if it's all in agreement and then you fall outside of the drumbeat of the universe or the drumbeat, that also makes you fall outside of time if that makes any sense i discovered this when i was 15 years old i got excited i was like man we can make an inertialist drives we can have inertialist drives and have uh, anti-gravity fields that allow us to travel at infinite speeds and stop at infinite stop and in instantly instantly start instantly stop and travel relatively cheaply by manipulating the forces of gravity and falling outside of it but alas i don't have the money i don't have the resources to fabricate it i tried some experiments but I don't have the machines. I can't machine this stuff. It's too difficult. Like, I have some ideas in my head on how I'd build it, like I said earlier, with a dense liquid and spinning in a certain pattern. But can I do it? I can't do it. So maybe one day if I get enough money or funding, I can explore this further. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope it made sense. Remember to share your stories or experiences with me. Um, the more you guys share, the more I'll be able to figure out because with all your stories, I'm starting to piece the puzzles together on how all these weird things work. And the more information I get and the more details you give, the better. This is good to be talked.